Welcome all. Please feel free to share this with your colleagues if you think they'll find this of interest. I want to talk today about why it's important that we listen to our students during our teaching practice. I think, first of all, just want to clarify the distinction between providing feedback to students and taking evaluative comments from students. I think sometimes the language we use is a little bit loose and that complicates things. It also devalues the sense of feedback that students are actually receiving during the course of their learning experience. I think we should always label anything we provide to students for feedback on their learning or in their learning as feedback. And then anything we receive from them is evaluation at an institutional level of national surveys and in our individual practice. So I want to talk about the way we elicit evaluation from our students. So obviously the easiest way of doing that is to read the room. You're looking for individual responses. You maybe need to avoid focusing on that one very negative grumpy, miserable looking student and read the room on that basis. You don't want to imply that that is the common feeling. But if you scan the room, you'll be able to see whether or not there is uh, a good degree of engagement. I think we need to distinguish between that kind of very informal in-session evaluation and more formal mechanisms for evaluation. And I want to talk about an, an in-session evaluation and then I'll talk about end of course or end of module evaluation in just a moment. I want to focus in this conversation about the way in which we use in-class evaluation. And the model that I personally prefer, and it works best in a face-to-face -face environment if you are teaching a series of courses, but it also works in an online environment as well something called small group instructional diagnostics, SGID, which is essentially a way of eliciting from the students some evaluative comment on what they're learning, how they're learning in your classroom. The structure of the questions that you ask are very important. They're more important than how you actually ask them. Formal SGID is actually you leaving the classroom and having a colleague coming and running a session with your students for 15-20 minutes uh, and that usually would happen around a third of the way through your course. This is to elicit whether or not the students are getting what you're intending they get, whether they're experiencing the learning as you intend it to be to be experienced. There are a number of different ways that you can do this, I think it works quite well to literally just hand out pieces of paper with four blocks on and ask them to fill out, put something in each of those blocks. But it's really important the order in which the questions are asked. So you're going to ask the students what's happening on this course that is supporting their learning. Not what am I doing to support your learning, what is supporting you in your learning? What is hindering you in your learning? What could I be doing differently to support you? And fourthly, what could you be doing differently to support your own learning? It's very important that you end with them thinking about it as reflective exercise. Very often students will say that last comment, what can, I, what can you be doing for your own learning? Students will very often say, oh, I need to do the pre-reading or I need to prepare better for class. Or, so it, it, it encourages them to take some degree of ownership over their own learning. It's really important that when you collate all of those responses that you do feedback. So if you're teaching face to face or online on a weekly or, or a regular basis, some scheduled basis, it's really important that you then say to the students, I listened to you. You suggested this is what's strengthening your learning collectively. I'm going to do more of that. This is what's hindering. I'll try and do less of that. That gives students a sense of participation and a sense of ownership in the learning process. That's a very important part of getting evaluation from students. The, the more formal aspect of end of course or end of module evaluation is usually structured around whatever institutional, regional or national surveys are 
carried out. Historically, institutions used to just do their own end of course uh, valuations and tutors regarded that as almost a, a tick box exercise. It's become much more significant in many countries to have institutional data that is then aggregated uh, across the, the entire piece. And I think it's important that you recognise that those questions are not necessarily questions that you have any direct control over. But it's very important that you are aware of what those questions are because you can then signal answers to the students through the course of your course, through the course of the learning. So I think it's really important to be aware of what the end of course evaluation looks like, which you probably end up administering, although you may not be able to control the questions, but you do have complete control of the in-class evaluation that happens. So please feel free to share this video with colleagues if you think it's interested, like and follow, be well.